We don't think of two as many. A polynomial could just contain two terms. So a polynomial is really a binomial. So for example, up here, 2x minus 1 is, in fact, a polynomial. Most of the time, if you're asked this on a test, you will be shown a trinomial. And trinomials are also, are also polynomials because they have many terms. And a polynomial could be something like 2x squared plus 3y minus 4. This is an example of a polynomial. An equation is something with an equal sign, so we are asked for that. An expression is something without an equal sign, and it could be an algebraic expression, so with variables. Or it could be a numerical expression. It could be something like 5 squared minus 2. A base, so this is another important word for us to know. A base, when we have something like 5 squared, the base is the 5. So the base is the 5, and the little 2 in the sky is the exponent. Is the exponent. Also, another couple of words that are very important are coefficient and constant. So in this case, the 3, the number in front of the variable, is called the coefficient. Okay, remember, coefficient, the number in front of a variable. However, if the number is alone without a variable, like this number 2 here, this is called a constant. So a constant is a number without a variable. And it could be subtract 2 as well, or subtract 10. It doesn't have to be addition. Okay, so this pretty much is question number 13. Just remember that a term is like a piece of this expression. Fourteen. Number fourteen is really just, you either know it or you don't, so hopefully we know this. Hopefully we know this so that when it does come up on the, on the test, it's going to be nice, quick, and easy. So A asks us three to the fourth power times by three to the third power. So this really is a law of exponents question. And we could multiply the whole thing out like this. So that's 3 to the 4th. And we are multiplying everything here, 3 to the 4th, by 3 to the 3rd, which is 3 times 3 times 3. Really what we're doing, though, is we're taking our 3 to the 4th power, and when we multiply it by 3 to the 3rd, really all we need to do is add the exponents. So here we have 7 3's in a row. 3 times 3 times 3, so on, 7 times. So this is 3 to the 7th. The shortcut is knowing that 3 to the 4th times 3 to the 3rd is really 3 to the 4 plus 3. So this equals 3 to the 7th. And above, this is just the reason why. This is the method behind that rule. But your answer would be 3 to the 7th. Okay, B. B is also asking as a law of exponents question. However, this time it's 2 to the 6th power divided by 2 to the 2nd power. So again, we could show this the long way, 2 times 2 times 2, 6 times. And then we are dividing by 2 times 2, 2 squared. And we could, let's change color, we could cancel a 2 from the top and cancel a 2 from the bottom and because we have another 2 on the top and bottom we could cancel and then this would leave us with 2 times itself 4 times and this would be your answer but really the shortcut is when we are dividing bases with the same base with different exponents or the same exponents when we're dividing the same base we do 2 and then we do 6 minus 2. We actually subtract the exponent that is there in the denominator. 
So 2 to the 6 minus 2 is really 2 to the 4th. We get the same answer as doing it the long way. Okay, C. C is a little tricky. Y squared to the 4th power. This is the power law of exponents. When we have a power to the power, what we need to do is we need to multiply those exponents together. So this would give us y to the 2 times 4. So our final answer is y to the 8th power. This is our answer. Okay, that was C. I also have a couple more, so I'm going to wipe the page. Okay, so the rest of this question, we're still on question number 14, but we are on D. Okay, so D is 3T, and everything is in parentheses, to the third power. With this one, we don't need to be worried, but we do need to remember that this T has an invisible one. And so we do multiply those exponents, and this 3 also has an invisible 1. So we also have the 3 attack the other 3. So this would give us 3 to the 1 times 3, which is 3, and also t to the first power, and that 1 multiplies the 3, so it gives us t to the third. This is our answer. We could do something. We could expand our 3 to the third power, so that's 3 times 3 times 3, which gives us 27 t to the third power. Let me just make my answer very clear. This is a 3 up there. That's our answer, and that is, that is D. All right. E, almost there. I doubt that this one is going to come up in our exam, but it might. So let's make sure we know how to do it. We can do it. So we have 2y to the fourth power. And the way that this is different to the one above is that we have an exponent. We, we have an exponent with the variable. So again, this 3 attacks the 4, and this 3 attacks the invisible 1 that really is next to that 2. So we end up with 2 to the 1 times 3. Remember, these are multiplying, which gives us 3. And we have y to the 4 times 3. So 4 times 3. This was 1 times 3. So I could put that there, 1 times 3. And this is 4 times 3. So 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And this, the y stays, and 4 times 3 is 12. So our final answer for E, 14E, is 8y to the 12th power. Bonus 1. Let's do this really fast. Bonus 1. Okay, so bonus 1 tells us to do a bunch of things. We are told that this guy earns $100 per week. We also know that he earns $2 for every car. We know that last week he earned $370. Now, A tells us to create an equation. And it also tells us to define a variable to represent the situation. So if I say let, C equal the number. You could let the variable be any letter at all. I'm going to use C for the number of cars washed. Okay? So the equation would start off well, 2C is how much he gets per car times by the number of cars. And he also gets a hundred dollars no matter what a hundred dollars is the constant it's the constant it doesn't vary at all there's no variable there so 2c plus a hundred equals 370 okay that's an equation that represents the situation in this problem now B tells us to find out the number of cars he washed and it tells us to solve symbolically and using backtracking. So symbolically, we would have 2C plus 100 
equals 370. Now, to solve symbolically, we would at first draw a little line. We would subtract 100 from both sides. So this would give us 270 over here. The hundreds cancel out. And this equals 2C. That was step number one. Step two is to get rid of the coefficient here. So we divide by two. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other side. So we end up with C equals 135. And we must put the units, cars, washed. Okay, so this would be our answer for B. This would be our answer for A. For B, we're also told to use backtracking. So this equation, we could use backtracking by showing bubbles. So this would be C equals, and that's what we've got to try and find out. Now, whatever C is, we do this. We multiply by 2. So we times this by 2. The next thing that we do after we times by 2 is we add we add 100. We're just getting this information from our equation right here. And this gives us our answer, which we have our answer of 370. Okay, so in backtracking, what we need to do is we need to backtrack. We need to go backwards. So to get from 370 to this thing in the middle, we need to do the opposite of what it says above. So we subtract 100. We get 270. To do the opposite, to go back, we need to do the opposite of times by 2, which is divide by 2. And so 270 divided by 2 would be 135. We still have to write this. We still have to write 135 cars washed. Okay, now C I'm going to do on another page. Okay? Okay, so C, still bonus one. All right, let's change the pen back. Okay, C. Now, C is saying to us, next week, he wants to earn at least 400. So we still know that he gets two times C plus 100. That's how much he earns. Two dollars for every car plus a hundred dollars. And he wants this amount to be at least $400. So this means that however much he earns must be greater than